Hi, I'm Kate, and I make junk journals, and today we're going to make this awesome page. First of all, thank you so much for watching. Thank you everyone who's commented, subscribed, given me ideas, suggestions, and asked questions. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments, and I'll try to get to them at the end of my videos. All right, so let's check out what it is we're trying to recreate. In the front, we have this little trifold thing. Then we have this little belly band from this. Then this whole thing flaps open to the side, and then this lifts up two times. And there is a flap page there, and a flappy page there. And then here's just a little card folded with a little tuck spot here. There is a pocket on the top with these two things. And this folds up, and then these two kind of keep that down. And then we have this little card at the bottom. So let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to grab a piece of scrapbook paper for this, and I'm going to look for my cutter that I'm always losing. Where the heck did it go? Oh, here. So we're making our third page, and we want it to make our other two pages that we've done. So we're gonna cut this to be 10 by seven. And we're gonna round our corners, since we're kind of rounding every corner in this book. And again, you can use any paper that you want. Just make sure that it's something kind of structured and kind of thick so that it can bear a lot of weight because these are going to be heavy pages. And I'm using my Tim Holtz Distress Ink Weather Wood. And we're gonna kind of just lightly brush the edges so that it gives it a little bit of texture and dimensionality and a little bit of separation. We can be kind of messy. After all, we are junk journaling. Okay, so I'm going to fold this paper in half and it will be ready to start building. So we're going to look at the basic structure of this page. We have this longer strip of paper right here with a separate piece of paper on top. So we're gonna start with this little part, back paper first, and I'm just gonna use some scrapbook paper and I'm gonna use something fairly thick, about the same thickness as my page. Okay, so as I cut this, I'm gonna think, I need a little bit of room here for a paper. This is also gonna be a pocket, and then there's a pocket below so that we kinda of need some space. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and be like, I don't know, somewhere like there. Okay, and so now we're going to fold this over, and I don't want anything to ever really get close to my spine so that my spine doesn't get too bunchy and that it's easier and smoother to open things in the journal. So I'm just gonna give it like, I don't know, at least a quarter of an inch, and we're going to fold it right against where that fold line is. And now we just want this top one to be a little bit shorter than this bottom flap. So we're going to fold it about there and then that's where we're gonna cut it. So we're going to round just these two corners right here. And then we're going to ink the edges. And when you ink these edges, it's gonna make a big difference in how that will look under there. So I'd kind of bleed over the edge a little bit to give it just a little bit more something going on. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we got all that inked up and I'm going to want to place it somewhere there-ish. It depends on how big I want my pocket to stick out and how fat I want that paper up there. So something like there looks good to me and we're going to glue it in an H pattern to create a pocket on the top and a pocket on the bottom. So depending on where I put the line in the middle, it will make these pockets you know, that much deep. So I want a little bit more room on my top pocket because I want bigger papers and I'm just gonna put a little paper there. So it's just gonna slightly be more toward the bottom. You can move this at any extreme and just know that that will be how shallow or deep your pocket is. And then we're just gonna flip it over like that press it down so whenever i have something that lines up with the edge of the page that we're going to be turning i want to make sure that this and this side are connected so that as i turn the page i'm not trying to like open that up and tearing my paper so i want to make it as foolproof as i can 
and I'm going to either put a strip of washi tape there or I can decoupage some napkin or tissue paper or something there. I think I'm gonna go the decoupage route. I'm just gonna grab a napkin and tear a little piece off. Make sure it's a little bit longer than my paper. Then I think I'll have it overlap about that much. And then over here, I'm just gonna kind of tear it, something like that. Then I can fold this and kind of see where it ends. And cut it somewhere around there. Well, I think I want it this way. And then I'm gonna rip off this edge a little bit more, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to tear off the extra little layers until I just have the top. I'm gonna grab my Elmer's glue and I'm just going to smother it with glue all of where I wanna put it on. Put that little napkin there, rub it in, smooth it out. And then I'm just gonna take the glue and rub on top again. Just gonna seal it up. And that will just give us a more smooth transition and not confuse people about the layers. And it will reinforce it a little bit too. The only downside to using a glue stick is it takes a little while to dry. So I think I'm gonna go get myself a snack. Okay, where were we? All right, so that is dry. And now we can work on this little scrapbook page that folds out on the top. So we're just gonna grab another paper Okay, so I'm gonna use this paper and we're gonna create a fold out belly band kind of thing. So I'm gonna need all 12 inches in length and I'm just going to trim this to be smaller than this. And I'm gonna to want to have um, a good amount of the bottom stuff peeking out so that when we slip something underneath it, we can see the edges. So I'm going to put this here. And so it gives me that much space and about that much space on here as well. So we'll cut it around there. All right, let's round these corners. And we can get some ink around the edges. All right, you know, on second thought, I should not have rounded these corners because it will look better for this to kind of squarely go like that. It's a little weird to have round corners, but there are no mistakes in junk journaling, so we will go with it. So to get this fold the way I want it, I'm going to kind of line it up the two bottoms and flip it over. And anytime I ever fold paper, I always want there to be space above the crease. So I'm not going to fold it right here. I'm going to fold it like right here. And then I'm just going to curl it and look. And I'll kind of peek around the corner and make sure that there is just a little bit of space and I'm not folding it right up to the line. And then I will smush the rest of that down. That is really important to make it nest nicely and then when you add bulk, it doesn't get too short. So just a little bit of room anytime you fold. All right, so this will go back here and that will be folded up and then this will be folded two times so I'm gonna fold it the opposite way first so that I can kind of see how deep I want it. And I don't want my crease to go all the way to the bottom, just almost to the bottom. So once I have that crease, I can fold it over and press it down nice and firm the way I want it. Because this is too long, I'm going to just fold it up. And I'm gonna want a nice gap here because this is my last fold. I kind of like them to get smaller as they go. And maybe we'll bend this over like that and we can turn that into a tuck spot. So that is fun and then we don't have to cut it. So we're going to dust the edges of that. And that is super ironic that I want this one flat and this one is now flat, but I'm gonna keep it like that and roll with the punches. So I'm just gonna glue the two edges and we can stick something in there. Okay, fold that down. And then I'm going to glue this bottom one in belly band style here and here to this uh, top flap thing. And then we'll flip this over and try to kind of center it. And once I have that generally where I want, I'll flip it over and make sure the bottoms are lining up nice that I've got that room on the top. Okay, so now we have all our foundational pieces set up. We have this little flap here, 
and that little flat pocket and those are pockets and now all we have to do is like splash things on top of it so let's start top to bottom we're going to have a little trifold open here with some sort of paper i'm going to use avocado dye paper and i've already trifolded this for another project and please fit yes it fits perfect so i am going to measure here to here give myself a little bit of a border and cut it down here so if you don't have something pre-folded just fold once fold twice a little bit shorter than your back border thing eh. sometimes my paper gets eaten by my paper cutter i really want a big like cha chonk thing but baby steps i will get that I'm going to round these corners just the edges okay and I'm gonna glue this entire back side and lay it flat right there okay and then I'm just going to semi center that rub it in and that looks good so now we need a little tab to hold this in place and something I love to use is this little flower. I actually don't have this die cut. Somebody gave it to me in a swap. They actually gave me a whole bunch and I'm almost out of them. So maybe I need to go find this because this is a really handy shape. So I like this because sometimes you can glue all four sides except for one and it kind of tucks like that. And I think that's super cool. So I'm just gonna rotate it this way and trim off the bottom of this. So I trimmed off all but two sides and I'm just gonna kind of set it somewhere that I think is cool. I don't know, there maybe, that's kind of cute, it's like a heart. Or I could do it on the side and then that would give me more gluing. I think I'm gonna put it right here. And so I'm gonna just glue this whole kind of bottom half. And stick the dry part over that and then let that dry. Then let's find a fun sticker to put on top of that so it's not all by itself. I don't know, is that weird? Maybe it's a little weird. So we will just cover it with a word and everyone will be so distracted reading that they won't realize that it's weird. You know, we're just gonna let it go. There we go. So there is our little tab. All right, so now we need to find something to stick in this little belly band right here. I'm just going to use this little stationery and we're just going to trim it down so that it's smaller than the belly band. So something like that. Okay, and I'm just going to fold this a few times. And so if this is where my glue is, I want to make sure that it can for sure fit within that space. So I'm going to kind of underestimate and make it even smaller than I think, just because I've been wrong before. Fold that all the way. Let's check and make sure that I did that right. Okay, that will fit. So let's pull this back out and round the corners and then we'll shove it back in. Okay, let's put that in there. Nice. Okay, so let's open this sucker up and do this top part. So here we just have one flap open. We can do that. Let's use this, because I kind of like these little things. And we will line this up to figure out where we want to fold it to make it a little smaller. Put that down. Okay, now that I've got that crease to go off of, I will line it up a little nicer and crease it down. And then we're just going to trim off this little part. Okay, so now I'm going to measure the top. And we're just going to keep a little border around all the edges and cut about there. And I'm just going to round out the top piece and ink it along the edges. And I'm just going to glue the entire back side. All right, there's our little flap. I'm gonna add some washi tape to add a little more design and then also it'll add just a tiny bit of weight on there to kind of help us keep that down. 
but we don't have to worry about that too much because it will be smashed inside so it shouldn't like flap open or anything but just for fun I got this new gold washi tape from Hobby Lobby yesterday so let's use this put it somewhere around there and I'll just wrap the edges around There we go. And a little birdhouse for good measure. There we go. So now we need a little tab to put a tuck spot. I'm just gonna use this paper because it's already cut to the perfect shape. And I'm just gonna glue it there and there. Plop, plop, plop. All right, we definitely need something there and I could put like a sticker or, do you know what would actually be super cute? If I did like a tiny little paper so you could write like a little cute note. So I'm gonna grab a little piece of paper. What if we folded it and put like the world's tiniest tag in there? That would be so cute. Let's see, I will trim it about right there. Then I'm just gonna round just the top. Dust around the edges. <laughs> and then we will glue three sides. And now let's see if I have anything that tiny. If not, I'll have to just cut a little tiny piece of paper and stick it in there. I thought I had something tiny. Look at that. Yay! Dust these edges. Okay, this might be the cutest thing ever. Hooray! It does need a little something, doesn't it? Hmm. Nothing a butterfly can't fix. There we go. And now this whole thing is a tab, so we need something to tuck behind there. I have this piece of leftover notebook paper that I'm going to use. And I'm gonna first figure out the length that I want and probably cut it down to about there. And then for the height, I'm just gonna tuck it in its spot to kind of see where it lands. And I'm gonna cut it somewhere in there. Round this sucker up and dust the edges. All right, so it goes in there and that looks good. So cute. Let's move on to our next little layer of flippy flap things. So here I just had it flap up once. So let's just repeat it. And I have this coffee dyed paper I can use. And I will just line it up, making a border there and a border there and going in a little bit, cutting it there all the way up. Okay, so we're going to put it here and measure, just kind of eyeball it to leave a little border at the top as well. And we're going to cut it here. Once again, only rounding the top part so that those bottom corners can peek out. And we will ink the edges. That will look good. So we're going to uh, glue the entire back side of that as well. All right, and we'll just kind of try to center it as best we can. Press that on there. All right, let's use one of these cute stickers. And we'll just kind of stick it somewhere like that. All right, okay, so we made that tuck spot earlier, so now we need to find something to tuck in there. Okay, we'll just get this gold paper. Let's fold it in half. Does that fit? Yeah. Let's round the edges. And ink. All right, and that'll fit right in there. We're gonna take this sticker and chop off the bottom and put that right there. All right, something I can do to kind of add design and kind of help the structure of this little foldy flap out is I can add a strip of washi tape right here. So I want a little bit away from the edge so it kind of looks nice and has a little border and press that down 
down the whole thing. Okay, this is awesome. Now all we need is to glue this little paper thing and then find stuff to put in our pockets. So let's grab some paper and I'm just gonna grab that same coffee dyed paper we used before and I'm going to just try to keep a border on this side and a border on this side as well. And I'm actually gonna go in a little bit more to match up with this, just to make sure I'm staying away from that spine. Okay, and then we're just going to, I'm gonna want this to kind of be right here. And so I will just eyeball where the top is and give that a little border. Turn it around and make sure that's kind of straight. So to make the second crease, I'm just going to look here and push it down a little bit underneath where that is. And I'm not gonna fold it that way, that's just my little crease that helps me know where I want my fold to be. So I'll flip it back around and press it down the way I want it to go. And then do that same thing one more time roll it almost to the edge. So we're kind of doing that same nesting thing we were doing before. Oops, and then fold it the real way. And maybe we just keep going, right? To the end of the paper, and we just do that same thing. We're gonna roll it not quite to the edge, crease it, flip it around. And I think we can do it one more time. So I don't wanna have a flap that tiny, so I'll just trim that off. All right, let's round these corners. And I'm just gonna round the top two. And then we'll adjust all the edges. Do some of these little creases. Okay, let's fold this all up. And we're going to glue the entire back right here. We'll press that down, kind of lining up those two lines. That looks good. So we're going to put something in the pocket and that will kind of act as a little tab holding that down. So here is a tag that I just glued some paper to the back of and this is going to slip in there and hold that closed. And I like this because it kind of has a cute little design peeking out. And now let's just find something for the bottom. Okay, that card mm, is a tiny bit too small, so I'm just going to trim the edge. And we'll round these corners, and that will fit just a little bit nicer. And that is it. We did it. Ta-da! And it is so beautiful. So let's do a flip through and admire this beautiful thing. So we're going to open the tri-fold flap in the front. We have our cute little belly band right there. Flip it open, have this little fold out, roll it up, have that little fun flap, roll it again, and we have our little card here, and we put that all back. And then we have the cutest tag in the world, in this tiny little writing pocket, with this little tab that oop, holds a little notebook paper, and then we have this tag that holds this rollout paper and this little underneath pocket right there. I love this. Let me show you one last version of this. So we have that same trifold in the front, belly band with little notebook paper. And this time I made it a little pocket that folds up like that. We fold that up and that's just a flat card on there. And then here's a little tag and this little tab. This is holding this back and it just rolls up. got this little secret tag underneath there. So there you have it. It's a super fun template. 
Now it's time for a little Q&A. So Betty Butler asked me to introduce myself to give some background and talk about kind of my training and stuff. So I'm actually a photographer and I got my degree in photography back in 2009 and I've been in the photography world ever since. I've also done a lot of graphic design work which I love and in school I had to do a lot of like illustration, drawing, even clay. I really sucked at clay. Um, so it gave me a really wide range in the art world. I've scrapbooked my whole life but it was only periodically. And then in October of 2019, I was visiting my mother-in-law, Kathleen Maurer, and she showed me a junk journal. She took me in her craft room and made me a journal in front of my eyes while I took tons of notes. And I went home and started making junk journals and I've been addicted ever since. At first, I just tried to copy her style exactly, which I love. She has a fabulous style and you should definitely go check her out. I'll put her link in the description. But then slowly as I did this, I kind of learned that my favorite part was actually making secret tucks and folds and building layers. And that's when my style kind of turned from that classic vintage junk journal into like kind of like a maze of trying to puzzle in as many little things I can put that are interactive and kind of secret places all in one place. I have not actually watched very many tutorials. I have a really short attention span, which is why my videos are kind of fast. So everything I know about junk journaling comes from Kathleen and her teaching me and showing me, and she taught me a lot and gave me a lot of supplies. And also from doing swaps in the Junk Journal Junkies Facebook group and then looking at pictures of what other people have done and trying to kind of figure things out. Another thing that was super awesome is Kathleen had a whole bunch of junk journals that she has made and then ones she's got from other people that she traded and I could just look through physical junk journals over and over again and kind of get the idea. I think that was so helpful. It's probably a lot harder to get started if you see them online before you actually hold one. If you've never made a junk journal before, might be a good idea to purchase one first so you can kind of get an idea of how it's constructed. Anyway, as my style progressed, I made an Etsy site and so I started making flip through videos so that people could look at what's inside every page before they purchased them on Etsy. And that's when I started my YouTube channel. Then on my Instagram, I had people start asking me about tutorials. So I decided to try it out and I love it so much. This is so much fun. So thanks so much for being here and coming along with me on my little adventure to figure out how to do tutorials and progress in my junk journaling. Hopefully that answered that question. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll see you next time, friends.